Hey guys, all right, I have to be honest. I lied. Didn't intentionally lie, but uh, yeah, we have a box here. This means there's another unboxing. And in the last unboxing video, I said that was gonna be the last one for a while. So unless you count two weeks a while, well, it is what it is. Problem is, is I got a couple of really good deals and I just couldn't pass them up, so. My wife and kids think I need an intervention, but yeah, you know, I enjoy it. So I also have to admit, I am a little bit spun up right now. So this boxing is a little bit lighter than I like because FedEx kind of dropped the ball on this. So I've spent the last two hours on the phone trying to get the driver to deliver these snakes uh, as soon as possible. They weren't going to deliver them for a couple more hours and it is really hot outside. So I'm going to get into these unboxings really quick because I'm worried about the animals. So I want to get them out as fast as possible. This unboxing is going to be the largest yet. I did an unboxing a while ago with four snakes. This is even more than that. There are, are going to be six snakes today. This first box comes from the ball factory. And uh, so, you know, got some cards, excellent. These ones aren't going to be the most glorious. What I've decided to do is fill out my uh, female collection. So as you've probably picked up from a lot of my other videos, I've been concentrating on having mostly females in the collection to start and for mm, the next year or so before I start picking up the males to go with these girls. So I decided that I needed to get a couple more females so in about three years I can increase the number of clutches that I can get and I also wanted to get some hats. So these are just regular normal ball pythons but they are het and they are het for desert coast. and the off-camera sounds are brought to you by my assistant my daughter who is uh, having one of those mornings she's not a morning person and she's been up for the last four hours waiting on these snakes so she's not happy so let's get these out uh, here you go and this one's going to start off with a hiss probably because I brought it upside down and I'm using my cell phone because there's a lot of snakes and I wasn't quite sure that uh, my SLR was going to be able to capture all of it in one take so I switched up to my cell phone so hopefully I am centered so she is a female het desert ghost she looks like she's no worse for the wear considering uh, that she got to spend a little extra time in a, uh, a hot truck. So I'm gonna put her back in her bag. Now, one of the other reasons that I haven't really gone off and started doing a bunch of videos on the business side of ball python breeding is the fact that I ended up uh, getting really busy with the care of these snakes. I've gotten quite a few in the last couple months. And, um, well, one of the uh, snakes that I got from the local uh, pet store ended up being infested with mites. So I've been battling mites through my collection and a lot of people will probably go, why didn't I just quarantine all my snakes? Well, technically, since how I've only had the collection for two months, all my snakes are in quarantine. So that's one of the reasons I've expedited the acquisition of all the snakes so I can quarantine them all in one go. 
So instead of getting a snake and then having quarantine it for three months and then get another one and quarantine that one for three months. So by doing it this way, I get it all knocked out in one go. So there's the other one. She looks fine, a little on the defensive side, kind of hissy. But uh, I'm not seeing any stowaways on her, which is good. But uh, after that little escapade with the mites, all my snakes go into a full snake mite prevention uh, routine now. So all of them will get baths. I will wipe them down to make sure that any mites that I don't see will be... Uh, taken care of and then I will set them in their tubs a little bit away from everybody else. All right, here's the second package. This one, its story is, this one's kind of a gamble. This particular morph is one of two. I don't know what it is. And until she grows up and I prove her out, I won't know what she is. So she is either a yellow belly or a gravel. So she is going to either make me ivories or she's going to make me highways. And I got her on Morph Market. She was a really good price and shipping was included. And she is more of a sub-adult than she is a juvenile or a hatchling. So, right on the cusp. She's about 240 grams. So, she's got a bit of head start on a lot of my other girls. So, let's see. Let me cut this tape. But... Um, I wasn't worried about taking the gamble. It's like going, I'm happy if she's a yellow belly, I'll be even happier if she's a gravel. But either way, I'm fine with it. It's like going, the male that I'm going to put her to is going to be my orange dream yellow belly het clown. So the worst I'm going to come out is with, you know, orange dream ivories, which are about a $900 snake. Nothing wrong with that. And if I luck out and she turns out to be a gravel, then I will have chances of hitting the Orange Dream Highway, which is, mm, I think, about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 snake. So either way, that's a good snake to produce for the initial investment. Then again, the money is only part of it. They're both beautiful snakes, and I want to have them in my collection. So, and that would be my phone going off because I forgot to turn off the ringer because I've been dealing with FedEx all morning. So, sorry about that. Nothing I can do about it right now, but it'll stop. So, here she is. Let's figure out where her head is so I don't stick it my hand in here and get it bit so. there you go so she's a little bit larger and she's kind of all coiled up which I kind of expect so she has the typical yellow belly markings on the bottom, but then again, so does the gravel. So this could be either way, but I haven't been doing this long enough, so I couldn't tell you one way or not. I don't think very many people can, and if they can, they're keeping it to themselves. So yeah, she's a really nice looking snake either way. So I am happy with her. So definitely worth the uh, the price at the lottery ticket. So no matter what she turns out to be, I still win. So I like her. So like I said, I'd like to go a lot slower with this, but I'm trying to rush through unboxing all these because I want to make sure everybody's okay. 
so. And clear off this. Looks like I'll be vacuuming again in a little while. All right, and here is the one I've been looking forward to the most. This one is probably the biggest deal I've found yet on Morph Market. And this one is going to open up a couple of really nice projects for our collection. So there are three snakes in here for two different projects. So good, this one's got a cryo pack. A lot of newspaper. We go. Alright. One, two. And three. And apparently my dog is exploding. Great. So, no markings on these. So, I'll just open up one at a time. And if it's not the one that I want, or if it's one of the ones I want to show off last, I'll just set it to the side and save it. So, let's see what we've got first. Which one are you? Okay. Pretty sure I know which one you are, but we'll open up the other ones. Hopefully they don't crawl out. Otherwise, then you guys get a surprise. There you go. You are the last one to come out. You're kind of the star of the show. Alright, well, let's see. Like I said, if some of these get out of position, I apologize. I don't have a way of monitoring to make sure I'm in frame right now, but I'll do what I can. Okay, yep, all right. So you're number two. So we'll start with this one. And you look like you wanted to come out. So, let's see. Come here. All right, so this is one of the few boys that I have. I only have three now. This one's the third one. So this one is a hypo or a ghost. So he's going to be kind of the patriarch of our ghost projects, well, hypo projects. I'm trying to get in the habit of calling everything that's not a true ghost hypo, even though hypo and ghost are used interchangeably. So, wow, he's really curious. So, nice little hypo. <laughs> so, doesn't look like the trip and all the time in the truck has affected him that much. So, we'll set him back in. Yeah, and out he comes. Apparently, he's done with the bag. So, put no, stay. We're definitely going to have to tie him up until he's ready. Otherwise, he's going to try to escape on us. Seriously? Not even going to give me a chance to tie the bag, are you? Come on. All right. I think 
somebody's becoming a little fond of him already because she just wants to play with him. So I'll pass him off to my daughter. All right, now this one comes with a little controversy. And um, yeah, hold on a sec. <laughs> This one's got some controversy, but we've got some escaping snakes to deal with. So you want to keep on top of that over there? <laughs> All right. Well, my daughter's dealing with the uh, runaways. There's been a bit of controversy on YouTube, and I really can see both sides of the story. I see the people who are against and the people who are for it. So while... I understand both sides of the story. I think the important part is to do your own research and make your own decisions. Don't let anybody decide for you. But uh, that controversy that I'm speaking of is on spiders. And I've done a lot of research and I've seen a couple and I've handled some. I've seen ones with bad head wobble and I've seen some like this one, which seems to have very little of it. I think most of the shaking is my hand more than the snake, but she is a honeybee. So spider and hypo together. And I love these animals. They are absolutely gorgeous. I do see some examples that I feel bad for, that their quality of life is impacted, but I've seen more that are fine. She isn't my first spider. I have two others in my collection, which will be in some of my more feature series later. And they're fine. One's got a little bit of a wobble. The other one's a little bit more severe, but not an issue. Nope, you can't come out yet. So none of them have been a problem. They're some of my best eaters. So, and a lot of people say that, and I've seen the flip side. I've seen some that are really, really bad. So I think it comes down to the quality of the individual animal. And I think it comes down to the responsibility of the breeders to breed the best examples. But even then, you're never going to cull all of the, uh, of the problem animals out. It's not something that can be bred out. You can minimize it. So, yeah, I, I see the part where it's the breeder's responsibility on that part. Do I think that we should stop breeding these animals because of it? Not so much so. I like them. I'm probably going to breed a few of them just because there's examples that I want in my collection. Will I sell them to the general public? Absolutely not. These animals do, in some cases come with special needs and certain breeders need to be able to um, or special owners need to be able to accommodate those needs so any spiders that I breed if I sell them they will be to people who are experienced in handling snakes with this condition and that they know what they're getting into so I would never sell one of these snakes to somebody who this is their first snake. This is more of an advanced snake, just hands down. So if they are interested, I will more than happily explain to them what the spider wobble is and how it affects the snakes and try to educate them so they can make their own decision. I'm not going to put my opinions one way or another on anybody. So that's going to be it for my kind of spiel on spider. I've done the research. I like them. I'm willing to ex accept the risk that comes with them and handle their needs as it arises. So that's it on that. So I'm going to put her back in the bag and then we'll go to the start of the show. You are amazing. It's like on at some point when I bring out the other one, I'll I'll bring out all three of the spiders and put them together so you can compare them. But while she has a lot of similarities to my other one, she's completely different. She's really cool. All right, so let's put her back. 
So far, so good. So out of the six snakes, five of them seem to have made the trip with no ill effects. And concerning the other one was trying to sneak out just a moment ago, I think all of them have made it without a problem. So I'll wrap her up. I'll wrap this up a little bit so she doesn't sneak out while my daughter's not looking. Here you go. And apparently you haven't put that one back, so I think my daughter really likes the uh, hypo. All right, girl, you ready to come out? So the star of the show in this collection is this girl. And it's kind of funny is all, all these snakes started because of her. Because I, yeah, yeah, I know you're not happy. Hold on. I wouldn't be happy either. So all the snakes be happened because of her. So she looks like kind of a normal ball python with the exception that she is a high expression scaleless head. So I saw her and she was on Morph Market and she was at a price I couldn't resist. So I contacted the seller we started talking and I picked her up and then I picked up the other two, the uh, two hypos, the honeybee and the male hypo. So she is going to be the matriarch to our scaleless project. It's going to be a while before I get there. We're going to do some scaleless, but there are are a lot of uh, or we got to do a lot of scaleless heads to make before we can start into the scaleless stuff but there's a lot of neat projects that i want to try to achieve with her one of which and probably the first one i want to start working to is a scaleless blue-eyed lucy my daughter loves blue-eyed lucy's that's what got us started in this whole project that's what our mascot for zoic reptiles is so i thought it would be really really neat to make a scaleless blue-eyed Lucy. So that's what she's gonna head to. And from the looks of her, her body shape, and her size, she's quite possibly the smallest snake that we have now, even smaller than Angelina, which is the pie that we got from Justin Kabilka. So we named her Angelina. She took her first um, rat fuzzy last night, so I'm really happy about that. So this has been kind of a long rambling unboxing. I apologize for that. I was just kind of really spun up with FedEx today. So just kind of ranting and rambling. And uh, so now you got to see our five new girls and our one new boy. I'm going to get off and get these guys into their quarantine Get them all set up treat them for mites i don't think any of them have mites but after spending the last month and a half trying to get rid of all the other mites i'm not taking any risk anymore which is like i said one of the reasons i decided to get as many snakes this time around as i did i want to get all of the snakes that i want for the first collection done over with all the quarantine taken care of so i don't have to deal with it anymore so, but uh, yeah, from Zoic Reptiles, thanks for putting up with us. If you made it this far, far through the video, if you like it, go ahead and smash the like button. Subscriptions are welcome. We need all the subscribers we can get. We appreciate everybody that subscribed some more so far. And uh, if you haven't, please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Later.